Hi folks, Vince Perizzo here from PreviewsWorld.com. I'm talking to the man with the world's most expensive mustache, but some of you also know him as the owner-operator of Cards, Comics, Collectibles in Rochestown, Maryland. But for our purposes, for the purpose of this interview, we're going to introduce him as the Baltimore Comic-Con promoter, Mr. Nark Nathan! Hey, Yay! Look at all the crowd, man. People cheering. Yeah, yeah. Big star here, man. All right. Big star. Yeah. And you are coming up on your 18th year, right? Correct. First time. We, we did a take before this, and I, I messed it up, and so we had to do a a second one, but that's what happens when you can do something that's not shooting live. It's 18 years actually that we're going on. Admit for, it. Yeah, you I'm gonna admit, You can't do math. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a word guy. I can't add things. That's why I have these props right here to show that, yes, going back as far as 2000 is when the first Baltimore Comic Con took off and you had George Perez doing the cover, Stars and Stripes theme, right? You're kicking off this year's show with a similar theme because of a particular guest. But I guess I want to start off with just saying that um, we first used, We use the. Uh, Stars and Stripes quite often on our covers. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And without saying it, it's going to be on this year's team. Exactly, that's what it I was trying be. to get to. You've got somebody who's going to be in the embodiment of that going way back to the 70s. Yeah, well, but that's not going to be the cover of the program, yeah, but yes, she is. <laughs> but yes, she is. <laughs> but everybody knows about it. You can't keep a secret like that hidden, right? Why don't you give me a little bit of a breakdown here as to what's going on with this year's show. How is how is this? Uh, I mean, already we've got an ad going in the previews in the September catalog, previews catalog. We, if we turn to page uh, six, we got the Baltimore Comic Con here look showing that. that. Look at that. We got Frank Miller showing up, right? And of course, the guests we're going to get around to talking to eventually here. But, you know, it's just balls of the walls, man. People are going crazy over you this show. It gets Maryland bigger and bigger. Zone, Linda Carter? Yeah, that's it. How that's it. That? How, how did you pull that off? Maryland Zone. How did uh, you pull it off? I. Because she likes you. I, I hope so. <laughs> I think if you go back uh, and tell you something you may not know, go back uh, 20 plus years. There was an employee that worked at Diamond, mm -hmm. working on previews, that snuck a picture of Linda Carter into every issue of previews for at least two years, and no one knew it. Flew under the radar. And no one caught it. Biggest secret, you're hearing about this for the first time. Go back right? and look at your old previews. That's it. Marty Grosser would know that. I, he, previews he, editor. He, he may not know <laughs> that. Or he may not. <laughs> he may not. It wasn't him. Marty might be being it, called to the office right now because of this information. That's okay. All right, so that's when it started. And now fast forward, right, years we actually, later. We actually tried 15, 16 years ago, tried to, to do this with her. And it just wasn't her time. She didn't want to do it. And this was something that um, her agency contacted us in May. And then it moved that fast. And it was, it was really good. Breakneck speed. Mm -hmm. It was really good. So, Linda Carter. Yes. Linda Carter. Friday, and Friday night. Friday night only. Okay. Right. And she's going to be performing, I think? She is huh? going to be pre-performing. She's actually made many, many albums and has never stopped singing from days as, as a kid. She's actually written songs, right? That I didn't know. Yeah. I knew she sang, but I didn't know she uh -huh. actually wrote the songs. I've, I've heard people have seen her and loved her. And yeah. she's, she's performed a lot of places. Okay. What other, I mean, you got, okay, so Linda, Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. What other guests are uh, lined up for this year? We have of? young Bruce Wayne and Alfred from Gotham. Okay. We announced Finn Jones and Jessica Henwick of the Defenders and Iron Fist. Oh, now I'm hearing about this for the first time. Or perhaps since Get what from the Defenders. What we're talking about in here today is we're filming this hours after the last episode of Game of Thrones, and both were in Game of Thrones all the way up through last season. So in addition to the, the publishers, I mean the um, the guests that are coming, you got certain publishers showing up as well. We have a lot of publishers. So um, Archie. Aftershock, mm -hmm. Boom, Dynamite, IDW, Graffiti Designs, Valiant. So basically, if people walk in, there's a lot to see, there's a lot to do. And what I've noticed about Baltimore Comic Con is that you have ample amount of space for a food court. We are adding a massive food court this year. We're taking the hall next to ours, and it's going to be open for extra food and tables to sit down. And from what I understand, it's not just like food, it's like Papa John's, and like food that people are, brand food, people that are very familiar with it. So the you're not just, not order, you're it. just not ordering a pizza, <laughs> you're ordering Papa John's. Ah, there right. we go, so brand name pizza. Oh, right. And all kinds of food. There's, I think there's a bakery in there. And bakery? Yeah, can you imagine? It's, you got a guy tossing stuff over I mean, there. No, no, <laughs> no, making it no, right like, there. No, like, <laughs> like muffins and donuts and things like, like sweets. Real, real stuff that just, yeah, this yeah. perfect con food, right? It's gonna smell great. There you go. <laughs> it's gonna smell like a kitchen when you walk in. Right. Mom, I'm home. I need something to eat. Okay. So, like, okay, so in addition to That's the That's a food, lot of extra space just to sit down and Well, eat. yeah, because I've noticed that last year I thought this is just gonna go, keep going and going and going. It's 
true enough. You know, negative they're, hidden guys. I would, I, I would still bet that they're, that they're not going to be able to contain that line still that is Starbucks. That there's that is still yeah. That's, I don't that's, that's, bother with that line anymore. That line's longer than David Finch's. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. What's nice about what I noticed about last year's show is that the space that you have for kids to yeah. come in and do things, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So if families are out there looking for something to do, it has its you own know, separate programming. Got, yeah, it's a whole completely different program. Programming is right on the show floor, right in front of them. We have award winning cartoonists from all over the country that are famous for all ages books. And um, yeah, it's a lot of excitement. It might be the loudest area of the show. It is. If you walk by and you try to have a conversation with somebody on the phone, forget it. It's not going to happen because the kids just go crazy. Between markers and crayons, they're everywhere in that area. It's great. But that's good because that gives somebody, you know, if dad wants to go out or mom wants to go and, and do some shopping. Vince, it's not a place to babysit. It's a, it's a place to be interactive. <laughs> it's a place to draw. Don't brand my con the way, like, <laughs> Bruzio. No, I understand. No, it's good. I mean, I had it. They were having a lot of fun the last time I saw. Oh, no, they were there. And absolutely. Just, you know, I'm having the lights. They were having the lights. They were having the lights. They, they keep they, out of the way. It, that's part of something that they do. Right? Yeah, it is. So when you're walking around and you're seeing all this, I mean, again, you're going on 18 years now. I mean, it's been a while. You know what's great about that? Some of the, the, the cartoonists that have been in that area all along, now their kids are drawing comics. And they're bringing their, the cartoonists are bringing their own kids and they're, they're doing their own comics together as a family. The people on the other side of the table. So you got generations now. Isn't that something? Coming out yep. saying, I remember the first Baltimore Comic Con, and now here I am. Making, doing their own and thing. And I'm doing yep. something with Baltimore. Wow. Yeah. That's it. So, and looking at that timeline then, I mean, what, what jumps out at you as far as you first starting to say, wow, it used to be the Sandcastle, and now it's the corner mansion in Beverly Hills. I mean, you've really, yeah, like you've really come a long way, man. Like what really stands out in terms of when you first started saying, wow, I didn't think it would get, you know, as big as it did. Because you were in the bottom of a hotel room, I think, for the first one. When you, when you were first... on the side of a room. Yeah, right. yeah. You'd I have mean, to go downstairs. Okay. Load-in was easy. Uh, we, we started two, the first two years, we were a one-day show in a hotel. And the second year was the first East Coast gathering after 9-11. Mm. which was hard to do. Not an easy thing to, to do. do. Not well, an easy thing to do point, at all. If you, right. if you can remember that time, it was... A bleak period. It was a period where people didn't want to go anywhere in groups right. and gather. So it was it was a place where it was hard to, hard to even plan anything. And for reasons that it was just the time was right. It was a month later. And um, our attendance exploded that show at that day for a one-day show. We had great guests, we had a lot of things going on, but people still had to come, and they had never came for a month anywhere, anywhere, the grocery store. You know, people weren't going out publicly. They right. were glued in front of their TV, scared. Hobbits. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I, that's how I was. But at that show, it exploded to the point that we knew we had to do something else, and that hotel, even though I loved being there, had no place to grow, zero. Not parking anything. So we went to the convention center, which was a scary, scary jump. In the first couple of years, it was probably more than we needed. But if you live in around Baltimore, you know there's not a whole lot of options of convention center facilities. There's a handful of things, but they all have faults, either not enough hotel space or terrible load-in or a terrible location. So the harbor was it, and we jumped and we did it. and. There you are we, now. Here Baltimore we are. Convention Center, here we are. Right across the street now, from the now stadium. Now it's hard to get dates we need because the floor space that we take is so big, it's almost like a big Tetris piece that they can't always fit into where we want it to be. you got to fall where it falls, and there's only a handful of weekends of the year that it could actually fit. Here you go. You want your scoop? Yes. Last weekend of September next year, 2018, is our official dates. Whatever. I think it's the 30th. I think it's the last day of the month, and that's... 28, 29, 30. I think that's that's our dates next year. So for the people that want to go to this year's show, the dates are September, September 22nd, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. That's right. That's right. In the heart of Baltimore. And for those people who have not had a chance to check it out, you need to because it is happening. It is a place to go where everything is happening all at once. People dressed up, having a great time. And for those of you who haven't been there before, you need to check it out. And if you're traveling... That is, happens to be the Ravens weekend that they'll be in London, so they'll be out of town. But the Orioles will be playing the Rays, which might have some kind of playoff opportunity. That's good news for, for parking. 
Well, no, parking, we beat those guys. They don't show up until 7 o'clock. That's it's, the, it's the Ravens fans that show up at 5 o'clock roasting sausages on the back of their car. Those are the guys that take our parking. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much, right. man, for talking to All us right, today. Sure. Folks, you got to check it out, Baltimore Comic Con. For those of you out there who have been there, you know what you're in store for, but you haven't been there before, check it out. You're not going to... You're not going to... It's the place to be. It's Baltimore Comic Con. The family's going to love it. You're going to love it. You got all kinds of vendors there, all kinds of publishers. You got celebrity guests. It's the thing to do. You won't be disappointed. Again, sir, thank you so much for Thanks, bud. Take, taking the time to talk to us. Folks, for those of you, though, who know us from PreviousWorld.com, as always, we'd like to remind you keep the faith, keep reading comics.